Good morning, everyone. Uh, my introduction today, it's not a written speech. It's the thoughts of my heart that I felt it when I was coming here. So I just put down some points to remind myself what I want to highlight. I want to start with thanking Andrew so much and Golden Triangle for transforming our neighborhood to be a masterpiece. When we leased our store in 1817 M Street uh, less than two years ago, I was shaking. The city was empty, there were no one there. And like for my blessing and my luck, I met with Andrew two weeks after I leased. And since then, Andrew always is shaking on us. So I feel that I have backbone in my neighborhood. So thank you again, Andrew. And I want to thank the Office of Planning in DC for being so creative in what they are adding to our city. Uh, I traveled a lot. I tra I'm Egyptian originally, and I traveled most of the cities. I consider DC the most beautiful city hey, in US. Hey. DC is the most beautiful city in the USA and one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And again, I'm from Cairo, from a very beautiful city. When I'm, I'm talking about DC this way, I mean it. And then we'll come to Muriel Browser. Thank you so much for who you are. I cannot thank you enough for everything that you are doing for the city. I have met with you three times in the last 12 months. And I can see that you are a very strong woman, very accessible, very supportive. And every time I meet with you, I feel like the system is designed to help any hard worker to be a successful person, no matter who is this hardworking person. So thank you again. Thank you. As a small business owner and operator, I want to take this moment to ask DC visitors, residents, workers to shop local. Being a small business owner in just a global economy, it's not an easy job. We do everything with passion from our heart. We work at least 12 to 16 hours a day. I'm not talking about Dina and Fava Pat. I'm talking about most of the small businesses that I have been interacting with them. We seek your feedback. We meet you at the restaurant or at the shop or when we come to fix something at your house with a big smile because we know that your happiness is our success. So when you shop small, you are, you are not only getting satisfied with the product, but also you are supporting people that they really need support. So keep supporting us, keep shop small, like at Fava Pat, we do catering, we do lunch, we do a lot of stuff, but there is a lot like immigrants' food is just around the cor uh, uh, corner, uh, district donuts, above the ground. There is a lot of small businesses that I know they don't sleep to pay their rent, to pay their payroll. So, so this is an invitation to everyone to support small businesses. And now let us give a big hand to our Muriel to, to talk today about what's going on. Thank, thank you. Dina, thank you. Let's give Dina a big round of applause. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you in the most beautiful city in the world, in downtown Washington, D.C. And it's always great to be in the Golden Triangle. So I want to give a big shout out to the Golden Triangle bid and its president and CEO, Leona Agaritas. Give her a big round of applause. We're also joined by our Ward 2, I'm sorry, our at-large council member. I was going to say at-large council member, including for Ward 2, council member Kenyon McDuffie. Give Kenyon a big round of applause as well as the president and CEO of our downtown bid, Jaron Price. Thank you, Jaron, for um, being here as well. <clears throat> We're here today uh, to talk about how the Golden Triangle, which is, is often said, but is actually true, is blocks from the White House, uh, to launch our downtown action plan efforts. 
Uh, we're here today at a parklet, as you can see, uh, that our Office of Planning helped to fund. Um, and it's through programs like this where the bids, where other stakeholders all across the deep sea are looking for ways to activate sidewalks, alleys, and curbside spaces in new ways. Uh, and today we are announcing an additional round of grants totaling over $600,000 that will be awarded to six business improvement districts that's good news in the District of Columbia. So I too want to acknowledge my, what I call my big deal team at DEMPED. Let's give it up for DEMPED who is helping uh, to create these new programs and launch them in partnership uh, with uh, stakeholders like our bids. Uh, they also help to support events like outdoor movie nights, fitness classes, concerts, and other activations that bring people to our downtown. Earlier this week, uh, we attended a retail conference with one goal, and that is attracting retail activity to our city. Uh, our neighborhoods east of the river and the Golden Triangle in the downtown and all over Washington. I'm pleased to report that there continues to be incredible interest in opening, uh, offering great service and serving D.C. residents uh, in Ward 2, but also in Ward 7 and 8. And I'm very proud of the work that we're getting done. You have heard me talk about our recent re recently released comeback plan. Plan, uh, which is our five-year economic development strategy uh, for D.C. It sets big goals. How do we create more jobs and opportunity? Uh, and that is why we are focused on the downtown part of the plan today. Uh, because our ability to fund programs in every neighborhood uh, depends on the robust activity of our downtown. And we know that uh, and we know what our downtown means to our entitled bottom line. Our downtown is, of course, beautiful. People, you heard it from Dina, they come to Washington all the time uh, to talk about how sun-filled our streets are, how much green spaces that we have, and how simply beautiful our wide corridors make our city. Uh, including, of course, our dozens of monuments and museums that are free. It has restaurants and hotels and office spaces. In fact, most of our downtown is office space. Now, that is a fact that we want to change. So our comeback plan provides a roadmap for getting there. Uh, and that roadmap is the downtown action plan, which we're launching today. And it is going to deliver concrete actions for bringing that vision to life. The process will be led by the downtown DC bid, the Golden Triangle bid, and the Federal City Council, and supported by our office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. The bids in the Federal City Council will meet with the community, gather feedback and ideas, and by the fall, uh, they will have an additional set of initiatives to release uh, that will make up our action plan and will work nicely with my budget formulation for next year. There will be opportunities for the public to engage throughout the process, and we encourage you to do so. We, of course, are looking for big ideas and specific ideas. Of course, we're not waiting till the fall to start this transformation. In fact, I want to give a big shout out to our friends on the council, especially the chair of the Economic Development Committee, uh, Kenya McDuffie, for advancing our proposal for housing in downtown, which has gotten its first vote. And this investment will allow us to speed up the conversion of office buildings into housing and to get us 90% towards our goal of 15,000 new downtown residences by 2018. 
2028. So I want to also thank the council for restoring other investments like the festival fund, which is going to allow us to support our partners who are bringing people part of our strategy to the downtown. Uh, that includes the Capital Pride, uh, National Barbecue Festival, and the DC Wave, uh, which will be in Franklin Park in August, and the World Culture Festival, uh, which will be on the National Mall this fall. So before the second vote, we will continue to work with our friends on the council to revisit other investments, including the Food Access Fund uh, and other priorities. So let me finish by saying this. What we've heard over the last several days at the retail conference is a lot of excitement about D.C., Businesses believe in D.C., they want to be in D.C., they see opportunities where they didn't see or they couldn't afford opportunities before uh, to bring more jobs and opportunity uh, to our residents, including in the downtown. So I'm excited about what's ahead. I see opportunities. I know we have the talent and the initiatives and the will uh, to make sure um, that we are bringing our streets, our offices, our hotels, and our restaurants to life. Uh, and I know that we have a partner in Kenya McDuffie to get this hard work done. So I want to acknowledge him now for remarks. Thank you, Mayor. Let's give Mayor Bowser a round of applause for all her efforts, her team at Demp Head and all the other agencies that are making our downtown vibrant. Uh, I'm Kenya McDuffie. I'm council member at large and chair of the Council's Committee on Business and Economic Development. Today is a beautiful day to be outside enjoying lunch at a parklet just like this, right? And we've got a number of parklets and other wonderful places throughout our downtown for you all to be outdoors enjoying your lunch. Uh, it's just one example of the investments that Mayor Bowser, the Council of the District of Columbia, uh, and all those who care about the D.C. are investing to make sure that uh, you all enjoy your time here in the District of Columbia. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, we're doing that throughout our budget process that we've been engaged in over the last several months. There's some highlights, uh, like the Housing and Downtown Initiative that uh, many stakeholders contributed to over the course of several months, and we passed that on the first vote, and uh, it's going to reflect, I think, a lot of the input that you all have provided to us to make that happen. So you should give yourselves a round of applause. I'm looking out here, and I see some folks who called us. I see others who testified to make sure we got that right, and so we have to make sure we protect that for the second vote. I see our former War II Council member Jack Evans in the audience. Good to see you, Jack. I don't see War II Council Member Brooke Pinto, but I saw her for several days down in Las Vegas working hard to attract retail to downtown and throughout the rest of War II. And I know that she has not been resting uh, because she has been hard at work. I've been communicating her today on some things that we have to do with the council to make sure we are supporting the efforts to inject even more vitality into our downtown. And so you can rest assured uh, that there will be action uh, by the council to support this D.C. action plan, Madam Mayor. And it's absolutely essential that we all, anybody who cares about the District of Columbia, is stepping up to the plate to make sure that our efforts are reflected uh, in the energy that's needed to make sure that we're supporting the revitalization of downtown. I know you all want it. I think you all are starting to see it already. Uh, but we obviously have more work to do. I want to thank uh, uh, Dina for her remarks. I thought your remarks were absolutely beautiful. Weren't they? I know all the work that Leona and Jaron and the bids have been doing across the District of Columbia, uh, but I'm going to end, Mayor, with a line from Dina. She said that um, it's your happiness equals her success. And I think that's the case for the District of Columbia as well. It is the happiness of the residents who live here, the ones who we want to come here to live. It is the happiness of the workers who are putting in efforts to make uh, our city, uh, a, a place that everybody wants to live, work, and play. And it's the work and efforts and happiness of our small business owners uh, who are here laboring to make sure that you have places to enjoy to get goods and services. And collectively, we're going to continue to make sure the District of Columbia is a world-class city and the most beautiful city in the entire world. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me to be a part of this. Let's get to action.
All right, time for some action. Uh, and so next we want to hear from Leona with comments on uh, her part in leading this effort along with other initiatives in the, down, in the Golden Triangle Big. Leona. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we are a team. Go, okay. go ahead, Jan. Awesome. We decided we wanted to come up together yeah. because we're working on this unprecedented project together as the Golden Triangle bid and the downtown D.C. bid. Yes. Um, I want to thank you, Councilmember McDuffie. Um, again, your leadership on the Economic Development Committee has been tremendous. Uh, we appreciate all that you have been doing to support efforts that uh, will help to spur the re reimagination of downtown D.C. So thank you so much for that. Um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jaron Price. I have the honor of serving as the president and CEO of the Downtown DC Business Improvement District. Uh, we exist to help ensure that downtown stays as clean, safe, and economically viable as possible. Uh, and we cover 138 blocks that stretch between uh, North Capitol Street to Black Lives Matter Plaza and the area north of the National Mall up to the Washington, uh, Walter E. Washington Convention Center. Uh, and we share that boundary uh, with our colleagues at the Golden Triangle bid of Black Lives Matter Plaza, uh, which is why it's so important that as we make up that central business district that we are here today working together on the downtown action plans. So we're very excited about that. Um, I, I do want to say before I turn to Leona to introduce herself, uh, just a quick round of thank yous. Um, the mayor mentioned that we were at the retail conference uh, er earlier this week. I actually just returned this morning and still a little, little tired, um, but excited to be here. Um, and want to say um, there were so many good things said at that conference, and many retailers so excited about uh, getting into D.C. and wanting to bring uh, their services here to the city. Um, but what I also had a chance to do was talk to some of my counterparts uh, from bids and other downtowns who are going through similar challenges that we are here. And I'll tell you, some of what I heard wasn't so positive. Um, I'll tell you, some of what I heard from folks in other cities is that, you know, Jaron, our leadership, city leadership, just doesn't get it. Uh, we have a mayor that doesn't really prioritize downtown, um, or we have city council members or other uh, city leaders who, frankly, are missing the moment. Um, and, and as I was hearing that, it just made me so grateful to be here in Washington, D.C., the most beautiful city in the, war in the world, uh, but more importantly, where we have city leadership that gets it. And Mayor Bowser, I want to thank you for your continued support, uh, continued efforts to help uh, reimagine downtown. Uh, your leadership is, is just tireless and endless, and we appreciate you for all that you're doing. Um, and I especially want to thank you for the provisions that were in the budget uh, proposal, uh, specifically the housing in downtown and many of the other efforts. It's, it's going to make a long, uh, go a long way in terms of helping to spur that recovery that we need uh, so much. I will turn now to my colleague, uh, Leona Agaritas of the Golden Triangle Business Improvement District. All righty, thank you. Well, Jaron has basically said it all, but uh, just to summarize quickly, my name is Leona Agaritas, and I am the president and CEO of the Golden Triangle Business Improvement District, and welcome everybody today to our neighborhood. Um, the Golden Triangle stretches 44 square blocks from Lafayette Park and the White House and Black Lives Matter pa Plaza, right up against the downtown bid, north to DuPont Circle, and west to Washington Circle. So as, as Jaron mentioned, our two bids together make up most of what people think of as the downtown. And throughout COVID, we really worked together a lot. Um, and we have worked together during the uh, recovery. And now we are so excited to work together on this next phase of the comeback. Um, I too want to thank Mayor Bowser for everything she has done for her vision, her leadership, and her strong support for the downtown. And I really do want to reiterate what Jaron said because I too talk to colleagues from other cities. Um, and, you know, everybody is dealing with a lot of these issues, and not everybody has leadership that gets it. And so we are so grateful because that really helps move everybody forward. Um, I also want to thank. Uh, uh, Councilmember McDuffie for everything that he has done. He has been so um, important in all of this and um, really important to bringing people together. And I know that Councilmember Pinto could not be with us today, but she has just been tireless since she hit the ground running in June of 2020. So thank you to everybody. Awesome. 
So I know we are here today to launch the downtown action plan. And as the mayor said, and as council member McDuffie said, it's time for some action. Are you guys ready for some action? Action is needed. So we are so excited to be here. Uh, Leona and I want to share a little bit more with you about the action plan and what that will look like and how you can get involved. Um, so I will say, um, again, we're so excited to be here. We consider this downtown action plan to be a once in a century opportunity uh, to ensure that DC Central Business District continues to be the economic and fiscal engine of this city. Uh, the city, the capital region, the nation, and in fact, as we heard earlier, the whole world is watching to see what happens in D.C. Uh, as we begin this path forward. And we believe it's our not just our desire, but it's our obligation to make sure that we develop an exciting and a forward thinking and an inclusive plan for downtown um, that will help us to get there. Um, so this is what the downtown action plan will be, and this is what it will represent uh, for the city. Now, downtown D.C. represents many things to many people around the world, uh, but I think the important thing to remember is that our downtown belongs to all of us. It belongs to people, and so that's what we are here to do, is to make sure that our downtown thrives and that it, it serves people for many, many years to come. And that can't happen without this type of historic partnership and effort between the city, uh, between our business improvement districts, our federal partners, private sector stakeholders, and members of the community uh, throughout D.C. and all eight wards uh, who downtown belong to as well. Now, through this collaborative effort, there will be a number of different opportunities for residents, businesses, and organizations, um, and some even in our region to participate, uh, to provide feedback, and to engage in the action plan process. Um, in addition to preserving and enhancing downtown's history as a place of commerce, culture, entertainment, and tourism, the action plan will also promote ideas that expand the concept of downtown as a cluster of livable, vibrant neighborhoods that are diverse and equitable. Now, as a key component of the action plan, I'm excited to share with you that we have launched our official website, reimaginedowntowndc.com, which you can check out right now. So if you're around this room or around this uh, parklet with us right now and you're interested in how you can plug in, or if you're watching at home and interested, please visit reimaginedowntowndc.com and you can subscribe to get updates and alerts and get more information about this process that is underway. Uh, this website will also provide background information and updates as we progress on it's where the final document and report will go uh, as well. Uh, so we encourage you to sign up for that. Leona, I'll turn to you to share a little bit more about what the process will look like. Yeah, okay. Th thank you, Jaron. Um, and so as the mayor said earlier in her remarks, the action plan is going to move us from vision to tangible next steps. And so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, it, on the broad scale, it's going to align uh, with the mayor's comeback plan. Um, the new OP public realm study, which just kicked off about two or three weeks ago, and other efforts like Streets for People, which have funded things like this parklet in which the mayor announced a few minutes ago. Um, this massive undertaking, as Jaron said, is going to be grounded in public engagement, but it's also going to be grounded in expert analysis. And so we're going to start by gathering insights from residents and other stakeholders. Um, the stakeholder group is going to represent um, more than 100 people from a number of key industries. And so these industries include urban design, real estate, architecture, higher ed, read the comeback plan, um, business, retail, arts, entertainment, transportation, and providers of services for unhoused people. So we're going to gather insight from residents and these other stakeholders through public webinars, steering committee meetings, focus groups, interviews, and as Jaron just mentioned, our website, reimaginedowntowndc.com. Um, engagement is going to kick off soon, in two weeks, on June 15th, with our leadership group. And then on July 13th, our partners at the Federal City Council, um, which is led by former Mayor Tony Williams, and Kevin, I know you're here if you just want to um, wave your hand, um, is going to convene a, a visioning workshop with local and national and international leaders. You've heard today just how um, admired a city Washington, D.C. is throughout the world. Um, we will hold three public webinars throughout the summer and fall and additional meetings along the way. So all of these insights from this public engagement process are going to inform the economic development study, and that will be the key deliverable from this project. 
And this study is going to analyze existing data and metrics about downtown. So there are an, a number of things that are already out there. It's going to conduct additional research as is, as is appropriate. It will create economic models for potential interventions. It will determine the impacts of those interventions, will prioritize accordingly, and then recommend a roadmap for implementation. This is expected to be a document that looks at us both in the near, mid, well, not both, all in the mid, near, and long term, um, and, and lays out a roadmap. Um, it is intended to be something that we go back to again and again. Um, we have hired former planning director, Andrew Trueblood, there he is, um, to lead this project following a competitive procurement process. Um, Andrew is partnering with Justice and Sustainability Associates, IDEO, and Kyanite Partners. RC Elko, who is also here today, and HDR, who's here, have been hired to conduct the economic development study. We also selected those contractors following a competitive procurement process. So to take us back to the beginning, as the mayor has noted, this is a once in a century opportunity to reshape our downtown, to make it more resilient and equitable, and to create a model for other cities to aspire to. Um, thank you very much, and I'm so honored to turn back to the mayor. Well, aren't you excited about the leadership we just heard from these outstanding uh, downtown executives? Um, so I'm very uh, proud uh, to stand shoulder to shoulder with you uh, to get this work done uh, and uh, to make sure that all of the deliverables are leading us in a direction um, towards our robust recovery. Uh, so with that, we'll take a few questions, Thank press you. questions. Sure. Yes. Could you please give us a sense of the type of metrics that you'll be studying in this economic development study and how you intend to, to use what comes out of that to kind of guide the breadth of ideas and, and the types of ideas that you're hoping can come out of this? Well, I don't want to presuppose um, what the, the very capable people who have been named who are going to, to help us shape um, the study. I also don't want to get ahead of the pretty robust community engagement strategy um, that has been described. Um, but I will jump to what we hope to deliver. Um, when we uh, hear back from the, 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 the various components of the work ahead, uh, we want to be able to inform our investments. Uh, so you saw some of those investments in um, this year's budget discussion where we're very focused on um, office to housing conversion and also very focused on how we animate more places in the downtown. Um, but we know that there will be more to do in the transformation of, the, of a downtown that's about 90% commercial and office buildings. Uh, to what we think will be more residents in, in downtown D.C. I don't know if you want to add anything more about specifics. Um, yeah, I, I can just give you, I can give you perhaps an example of something. The, the comeback plan talks about universities. Um, so we already know data about the economic impact of universities, right, both here and in other places. Um, let's say that that you know, we want to create that roadmap. And so starting with what are the impacts, um, who's here now, who's moved here in the last eight to ten years, because we really have had a lot of university interest in the last eight to ten years, and, and very much so in the last two to three years. Um, what is it that drives their decisions? The ones that are here, what do they like about the District of Columbia? What is it about our messaging that can, um, you know, uh, to grow it? Is, is there a way we can develop that vision? And then what do we think the impacts of universities would be on the economy here? Is it increased innovation? Is it increased um, a pipeline for jobs? Does it, it, does it bring in other businesses? Um, what, how many jobs does it create? And, and so on and so on. So those are just kind of taking you through one example. But the examples are endless. Um, because the, the, the comeback plan is just so broad, but I hope that helps you kind of visualize what that my exercise could look like. So I hear you're joining our, our city hall beat. 
Welcome. Congratulations. You have a great group of people to cover, and they have good news. <laughs> Got it? Good news. All right, let me start with the press. Congratulations in all seriousness. Yes, sir. Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, Mayor Bowser, uh, two things. Number one, you've talked about bringing 15,000 uh, new residents to downtown. Now, to some people, people who are African-American leaders and those who are low income, 15,000 does not necessarily mean uh, people of color. Is that uh, true or not? Number two, you are working with the Federal City Council on this. Again, that's a red flag for some residents in this city because there's a perception the Federal City Council does not represent the average Washingtonian. Could you address those two concerns? Sure. So your first question is the downtown residential goal race specific? No, it's not. It is Washingtonian specific. Um, but I do want to address what I think is um, implied in your question. Um, because we have grown our population over the city over the last 15 years. And some people will say that has allowed us to build better schools, to improve public safety and transportation, to be the number one park system in, in the world. But it's come at a cost, and some of that cost is displacement. Um, so part of our economic, our five-year economic development strategy, I call it the comeback plan, uh, yes, it talks about growing our downtown residential, but also maintaining our residential base. Uh, and so our strategies to keep D.C. residents here while adding more D.C. residents uh, involves everything from investing in more local businesses. Our goal is also to increase the percentage of our businesses in down downtown D.C. that are African-American businesses, to invest in a black home ownership fund, and to invest in our neighborhoods. And sometimes in, um, this gets short shrift, what I'm about to say. Maybe I need to figure out how to say it better. Um, but we need to make sure that every neighborhood in D.C. has a full complement of amenities that make people want to live there because that is what makes D.C. more affordable. So do I have a grocery store? We spent a lot of time, and the, the council member will attest to this, talking about, I got to tell you, I've been talking about grocery stores east of the river for a long time. This was the best set of conversations I had about grocery east of the river in a, ever actually so the idea of telling grocers that they have they have to come east of the river is has changed to how can we get east of the river and so um that's why uh funds like our food access fund are so important so that we have the tools in our toolbox uh, to deliver on uh, the full complement of things that people need in a neighborhood that makes that neighborhood more affordable what i mean when i say that is Everybody shouldn't think that they have to live in down in, in Noma uh, or at the wharf or, you know, it, you know, in Brooklyn or every neighborhood should have a great school and restaurants and transportation parks and safety. Uh, and that is part of what our our strategy also focuses on in terms of working um, with different partners. Um, I think what you uh, everyone has to realize is that invest in and this is something that we're going to have to work on together. And I want to speak candidly for a minute. Uh, there is this narrative that has developed that is the business community or it's the community or that it's uh, developers or it's great affordable housing. And what I you know, have to say is that we're all a community and we all have to work together. Uh, so we will be tapping in uh, to the expertise of the Federal City Council led by the two time elected mayor of Washington DC. So don't tell me people don't trust Tony Williams because they do. Uh, and the team that he has put together of people who have um, who are leaders and have made incredible uh, investments uh, in our city. So we're going to uh, stand ready to support these efforts. But at the end of the day, James, they are going to be recommendations. They're going to be recommendations that are presented to the three time elected mayor of Washington, D.C. Yeah. 
And I don't know how many times you got in there, but a lot. And to the at-large council member and chair of the Economic Development Committee. So just like uh, many recommendations that I, that I receive, um, I have to use my experience and my knowledge of what's needed across the city and make the very, very best decisions possible. Uh, and this, this process will be no different. Any other press questions? Yes. Sorry, I'll try to get closer. Hey, it's Heather Long from the editorial board at the Washington Post. Hi, Good Heather. You. Uh, can you give us any updates on what role the federal government will play in this? Obviously, they have a lot of buildings and leases downtown. Have you gotten any updates from them? Are they going to play a role here? Uh, well, I expect that they will play a role in these discussions, especially the stakeholder outreach. We are following closely um, the, the new directive that the Office of Budget um, – oh, O M B Office of Management and Budget has issued um, to the agencies. Uh, we continue to have talks uh, on the political level about some decisions that we think uh, would also be helpful to us. But I have to tell you, uh, we have unleashed our creativity. I have charged everybody uh, with, of course, we want to get our federal workers back, but we acknowledge that there aren't going to be as many as were here before, uh, and we still have to reimagine our downtown. Um, and so I sometimes take the view that we're going to do it with you or without you, rather do it with you, but I've got to do it regardless. So we have unleashed, uh, and we have been, these folks have been thinking creatively um, with my team for many, many months about how we take uh, the, our assets uh, and think about the new workforce and how uh, we're going to make sure we have a vibrant and growing and beautiful downtown. And this is not a, a nice to, and, and I want to emphasize that. Uh, we can't uh, have the, the city that we have come to enjoy and the nice things and big investments and what I call the, the gold standard of many programs, especially in the area of human, uh, of, of human services, without making sure we have a growing uh, downtown. Yes, Sam. Uh, yes, I think maybe, maybe I'm too. Okay. I may be too close to that microphone, okay. that speaker. But anyway... Um, I'm just curious, what is your vision here? I mean, are you seeing lots of new buildings going up and, and stuff like that in, in, in downtown by 2028 or whatever? Uh, and then the, the another question, just you said you had a lot of exciting uh, discussions there. Who wanted to do what? Well, we met with a lot of grocers. Um, you won't be surprised that we have a great focus uh, in Ward 7, where we have some uh, opportunities, and on Benning Road and Minnesota Avenue, where we want to uh, have a new grocery opportunity. So we spent a lot of time talking about that. We also spent some time, something as near and dear to Councilmember McDuffie's heart, and it is now finally ready. All right, I spent like, I've driven down North Capitol Street my entire life. You probably heard me say this before, but my mother would frequently say, when are they going to do something with that place? You've heard this, right? She was talking about the McMillan Reservoir. When are they going to do something about that place? And I was like, Mom, you mean me? When am I going to do something about that place? And so uh, our, my team at DEMPED has been working. And I want to acknowledge the Roche Oput while our real estate director uh, and all of the teams involved. Um, but we're starting to see the work happen. The park that we promised, the recreation center is happening. Uh, and now we can really convince our retailers that it's ready uh, for, for a grocer. And so we're very uh, excited to, to re-engage and to facilitate uh, that, that process as well. So you were saying, though, but particularly with downtown, so basic, basically it's converting the office space into residential and you don't see a lot of building and stuff like that. Going I didn't on. say that. Um, what I said was we have to unleash our creativity. And that may mean that it looks, some of these buildings look different. Maybe they're not here at all. Maybe they become something else. 
or maybe they have a a different and another big use that uh, attracts people we have to replace the number of people in the downtown whether they're visiting uh, working playing going to restaurants going to our museums or living here um, so all of those things are are important Leona was right to emphasize our university partners I see one big one is here George Washington University uh, represented which abuts the golden triangle bid uh, we we've seen a lot of interest uh, from universities to be in Washington we love them they bring talent they bring young people that decide to stay stay here and live here and work for DC government sometimes uh, so uh, we want to encourage uh, ac activity like that yes any other press yes ma'am okay let me just finish up with the press and then I'll get a couple of community questions yes mayor I have an off-topic question okay uh, we uh, we learned uh, from your deputy mayor and testimony at the council yesterday something that was really eye-opening uh, she said that uh, she had never heard the name, or the DMV, I should say, had never heard the name of this woman who's accused of killing three people in a car accident over on the um, Rock Creek Parkway. Mm -hmm. And that DMV didn't know that she had three DUIs and that her license should be suspended. Well, just what, what is your reaction to knowing that, that um, your agency, DMV, didn't know anything about her? Well, I, I have to tell you, I don't know a lot about that situation. I read some reporting. Um, the city administrator called me to give me a briefing. So I'm not as familiar with the communication between the courts and DMV as I'm going to be. Um, and uh, whatever gaps there are, we will fill them. Um, and I actually think this sounds like a technology solution. Um, and, a tech, and, a, and a fix that could potentially make us safer on the road. So it will have my full attention. Any other questions? Yes. I just wanted to clarify one thing. Sure. So this, this entire action plan, would you say it's in service of the specific goal in the comeback plan of bringing in 15,000 new residents? Or what is the like specific mission that is kind of underlying all of this work, the a, guiding question? Yes, a vibrant robust downtown that contributes to the overall vibrancy of our city um, and so <laughs> that, that's basically the bottom line you heard Leona already uh, talk about look, using our five-year economic development strategy uh, as a, a great input into that um, but I would say if in the discussions if more ideas come to life they will also get a vetting yep you have a question nope okay okay sorry I'm Melissa came from WSA 9 um, in terms of when you're talking about changing these office buildings into residential apartments and things like that what is the biggest obstacle and challenge there in terms of the infrastructure because a lot of these buildings are a little bit older per se I, I'm, I'm not in construction, um, but it's not easy. Uh, they were constructed for people to, to come in, go to work, uh, and, and go home. Uh, so the access to light and water is a little bit different in, in buildings that aren't meant for people to live in. But all, none of that is impossible uh, to make changes, in, but it is necessary that we make necessary investments. Now, I've talked about money investments, um, like our, that what the council is moving now, but there are also they also need a policy environment that encourage, encourages innovation, that lessens the cost of construction, that shortens the time for permitting. Um, and some, some people would like us to also think about a very old law um, that makes our buildings a certain height. So there's a policy environment um, that we also have to consider to, to say to people, you asked me about challenges, I want people to think about DC first. When I mean people, I mean the institutional investors that help make these projects happen. So the money that we're talking about investing as a city is a small amount of what's needed uh, to transform some of these um, buildings. So these institutional investors 
they're looking to see how where's the best place for me to put our money for a return on investment uh, for our investors for our our our, rate, our payers into this fund so we need to say to them dc is the best place they've been saying it for 15 years dc is a great bet is the best place and we have a great inter return on our investment and so we have to continue to sig not signal this is where you want to invest in washington dc so we're going to have um, our policy makers in line because we're all going to get behind a plan uh, we're going to have our, uh, our business community at the table working on ideas. We're going to have our neighborhoods and residents aware and engaged in the process. We're going to work on the policy environment that makes it faster or less expensive to get started and deliver your projects. That's what it's going to take. So I'm going to take a couple of community questions. Yes, sir. And any other one, one here and one here. Okay, you got it. Yes, sir. And that it may be on a collision course with the uh, advent of the uh, federal workers coming back to work. We already see traffic congestion. Um, if, you, if you take two lanes and make them one traffic lane, that is cutting the number of traffic lanes in half throughout the city. So we see a collision course coming. Well, I take that as a note. Um, we continue uh, to be very focused on our transportation infrastructure. The council has moved some pretty significant projects related to transportation, transit, and making our roadway network safer. So we will continue to, to look at that balance um, and look at it in terms of how we think it is affecting um, our return to the office. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Ianta Summers. Thank you so much for your leadership and everything that you've done for the city so far. My question for you is, what are we doing about RFK? What are we doing about after-school programs for kids? And what are we doing about the ATVs and the problems that we have with those kinds of um, vehicles on our streets? Okay, I hope that we've seen fewer or less problems. At least I've gotten fewer reports so far this summer, but knock on wood, so we'll work on that. RFK, uh, we have a, a great opportunity. Uh, you've heard Council Member McDuffie. Why don't I ask the Council Member to address your question? Thank you, Mayor, and thank you so much for that question. Um, I recently wrote an op-ed talking about how we need to reimagine uh, the site at the old RFK. And what I've been trying to encourage people to do is to really lean in to innovation and think about all that could be there. Don't think about it as the old RFK and the sea of parking lots. Think about it as potentially a world-class uh, economic development that includes uh, potentially a stadium. but. Uh, also includes all the other things that the people of the District of Columbia would like to see in terms of housing, uh, access to transportation, uh, accessibility to parks. Uh, we just really have a tremendous opportunity, and I'm excited about the opportunity to hit the reset button, uh, thinking about not, not just the Washington Commanders, but certainly thinking about the Washington Commanders. If you've been here long enough, you remember the days of the Super Bowls and Doug Williams and, and, and Joe Theismann and... and uh, oh, listen, listen, I love that type of nostalgia. And so I think it's a tremendous opportunity. But first, we have to get uh, the federal government to have some great conversations with them to, to acquire the land. And, and then the mayor works with the council, myself, the chairman, and my colleagues, uh, and, and essentially do what the people of the District of Columbia would like to see happen at that site. Uh, potentially. What's that? She said water park. Uh, okay. Last question. Right here. Microphone. Hello, um, Mayor Bowser. Hi. Hi. I've been a resident of the district for 27 years. I live in Ward 4, uh, about a block away from where the new development is happening at the old Walter Reed Hospital. And I think it's wonderful. It's great. One thing, I want to know if you guys have checked the traffic pattern that's going to happen up and down Georgia Avenue, 14th Street, 16th Street. That's a huge property. Many people will be living there, and I'm just concerned. I mean, for example, Georgia Avenue is the traffic is crazy already, and I just want to know if you guys have, um, are you know, have 
thought about that? We have thought about it for many years uh, and very intensely. Uh, and just keep in mind, there were thousands of people at the height of Walter Reed that commuted in and out of Walter Reed. So the number of residents who will live there is not greater than the number of employees who used to work there. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we're also um, enlivening that roadway network. So now it's not a walled off campus, but it's connected uh, to the rest of the roadway network. Uh, and since uh, we've started at Walter Reed, uh, we have also uh, improved and invested in the public transit network in terms of busways. So we really want to, and I don't want to take our, our mind off of this because the, the pandemic kind of disrupted this notion that we have a world-class transit system here uh, and we want people to use it. Everybody can't drive. We're not a, a roadway network and nor will we ever be where everybody can drive everywhere. Um, so that's why we're trying to make our transit system have more frequent service to make sure it's safe uh, and to make sure that it's not sitting in the same traffic as everybody else. Um, so that's why we have um, bus lanes on Georgia Avenue uh, and we hope to have more uh, and on 16th Street as well. And I'm proud to say uh, that I live close to Walter Reed and have for a number of years, but a new grocer that has been promised to the community, the sign is up. Um, sometime in June or July, um, DC residents will have a new Whole Foods. So we're, we're very happy about that. Element as well. <laughs> I feel sad for so many of my neighbors that come out in the morning and their four tires are gone and the cars are on plastic crates. I don't know if you were aware of that. I don't know what that would have to do with the development. What it no, has this to. This is a different question. Oh, okay. Yeah. In terms of, you know, it's really bad in my neighborhood that, you know, we Where get do you up. Live? 14th and Van Buren. Okay, we'll double check on that. I haven't yeah, seen that as a hot spot for car theft, but we it's do. It's not even theft. These people are stealing our tires. I, I heard you. And you come out and your cars are. On Got top it. Of Thank you, everybody.